just quickly explaining about the rectus abdominis, eight pack muscles, not a six pack, sorry. And then uh, your obliques, the internal and external obliques and trying fe to feel for them as you're twisting yourself around and especially feeling into transversus abdominis. So you can go for the navel, just feeling for that and then moving the hand out to the, like the halfway to the side ribs, uh, side seam and then digging in and a little cough. <coughs> So it automatically switches on, but then can you also activate it? So stay folded over and lift the pelvic floor, even lifting the pubic bone, narrowing through the waist and trying to get that TA or transversus abdominis activation through the class and ah, just tuning into this psychological center as well. So you can bring the hands down onto the belly and allowing your body to settle, especially even though your hands are here um, holding, just bring your awareness into the belly and start to lengthen the breath out into the belly. And as you inhale down into the belly, the breath will naturally rise up into the chest. And as you exhale, really focus on an active exhalation. So navel moving towards the spine and feeling that even a curl through the pelvis. Inhale into your soft belly. So diaphragm is initiating the breath and then it can move out to the side ribs, the upper back and the upper chest together. And exhaling a little bit of navel to spine activation. So this is what we call the alternating current of the breath. So your belly has an opportunity to soften and relax that Buddha belly and Buddha wisdom. And as you exhale, the navel draws to the spine, feel the side waist narrowing. So you get this feeling of power and strength. This is Manipura, your lustrous gem is the third chakra, the seat of will and fire and determination. So let's enjoy this oscillating current and feel free once you've got the hang of it to rest the hands down onto the knees. And tuning into that psychological or energetic center, that feeling of being centered of being unwavering in yourself, so steady, so calm in yourself. You know who you are, you know what you're about, and you can't be swayed by anyone. What does center mean to you? Let's start to explore this as we move through poses a little more. So go ahead and uh, if you're in this Siddhasana position, you can cup the hands either side of the front ankle and then start to move the torso and in particular the belly and the pelvis. So as you rock forward, soft belly, inhale and open. And as you exhale, that active exhalation, navel to spine, rounding through the back. Notice how the pelvis and the spine all get involved in the movement. So as you exhale, it's like this rounded, folded position and a scooping under of the tail. As you inhale, moving almost into a back bend shape as the pelvis moves forward. So just continuing with your breath and accentuating the movement, especially in the belly. 
What I do love about a practice like this is I can have any sort of crazy day and just by bringing the awareness into the belly, into center, there's an instant calming, a soothing, a stabilizing effect. So hopefully this practice can be that tonic for you. Making sure that you breathe slowly, deliberately, with all of your attention in and out of the belly. And then coming into center, you can place the hands down onto the floor behind you. Just release the legs out into this beach pose shape and allow the knees to wash from side to side. But can you let the twisting movement come from the legs? So rather than the legs being uh, like stuck on at the hips, can you instead let the belly move and almost initiate that twisting movement from the belly? Great then you can stay with that, or if you'd like to, try this look mum, no hands variation. And again, so don't move the feet, just allow the center to guide the movement. So we've talked about like the eye in the navel and trying to get that feeling of twisting from there. Good. So next time you're on the right side, just stop there for a moment and take the hands into Namaste. Inhale to sweep the arms out and up, bring the palms to touch. And exhale, twisting over your right leg. So turning and looking. Inhale back through center. Bring the palms to touch overhead and exhale. Remember that navel to spine movement and even narrowing through the side waist as well. Inhale, back up through center. Exhale to twist around to the right. Inhale, soft belly as you reach up and exhale over to the left. Great, inhale, coming up through center. Exhale, twist off to the right. And then staying here, you can actually walk the hands out for, uh, along your mat. So you're twisting to lay down the back of the mat. And if you can, pillow the hands, just rest the forehead onto the hands for a moment. Feel free to rearrange the legs as you need to. And again, just focus in on that soft belly inhalation. And as you exhale, that little bit of navel to spine. So like I said, for me, there is this profound effect of just getting out of my head, out of my thoughts, even though we know that thoughts aren't localized in the head, it sure feels like it. Just dropping down into your center. And then walking the hands in so that you're once again in this uh, position. Yeah, that's it. Then inhaling the arms back up overhead, palms touch. Exhale, twisting over to the other side. Inhale, back up through center. Exhale to twist around to the right again. This time, bring the, keep the left hand over the right knee and bring the right arm up alongside the ear. So you're going into a, like a mermaid, merperson on a rock and side bending over your left leg. Yeah, that's it. And notice how as you exhale, there's a, and you engage navel to spine, that there's a wonderful 
structural stabilizing that happens. So it may allow you to go in just a little bit deeper. And you can focus your inhale into the right side gills to open out a little more. And then inhaling to come back up through center. Exhale the hands around to interlace the fingers behind the back of the body. Reach the knuckles back and inhale to open through the front of the body. Good job. Keep the hands there and releasing the hands. Come back through beach pose and then rinsing, washing side to side again. If you wanted to do the no hands version, you could do that. And making sure that you're not skimping on any of the movement, not rushing, but rather using that core as a stabilizer. You can then come back through to your left side. And I like to tuck the left toes, point the left toes and tuck them under my right thigh, but you just find what's right for you. You could even raise the hips a little. Inhale to take the arms up and begin twisting yourself again. Twisting yourself around to the left and actually let that right hip lift up a little so that you can twist from the belly and again feel that the belly and the legs are connected. Inhale back up through center, palms touch overhead and exhaling, twisting over to the other side. Inhale smoothly back up through center and exhale to the left. Remember to actually let that right hip lift. Inhale back up through center, exhaling. So rather than feeling like there's all these individual parts, can you feel the community of your body? So let that right hip lift now and start to walk back, walk to the back of your mat. So into this twist, maybe you can pillow the hands here, resting the forehead on the hands perhaps. And focus in on the ebb and flow of the breath within the belly. You can take those full yogic breaths. Here it might be nice to focus on breathing into the belly, the side ribs and the upper back as well. And then walking the hands in and bringing yourself on up. Bring both palms to touch overhead and twisting off to the right again. Inhale back up through center. So twisting left, but this time coming into the merperson variation, re reaching your left arm up and over. And try and shorten through the right side waist. Again, can you imagine that the, your uh, limbs, not just your legs, but maybe now your top arm is connected by a thread to your center, to your navel, to Manipura. As you inhale, maybe expand and lengthen through to the top fingertips a little more. As you exhale and move navel, navel to spine, maybe you can twist in a little deeper. Good job, inhale, coming all the way up. Let the palms touch overhead. Exhale to interlace behind the back of the body, reaching the knuckles back, lifting and opening. And then floating the hands around. Uh, transition yourself into a hands and knees position. And on hands and knees, this uh, tabletop position, again, connecting into center, inhale from, uh, as you drop the belly down, let the belly soften. As you exhale, really focus on navel to spine and scooping the tail under. See how these movements are natural and part of the breath and this, awareness of center. 
Inhale to expand and open through the front of the spine. Exhaling, opening out through the back of the spine. Press the hands away from you, scoop the tail more. So that's our cat tilt and then our dog tilt is to this inhale position, maybe lifting the sitting bones nice and high. Okay, exhale and round. Now I want you to tuck the toes towards you and take the inhale position as normal. But with the exhale, just stabilize in a neutral spine, but focus on that navel to spine. And do that again. Inhale, soft belly as you open. And as you exhale, go neutral spine um, and hover the knees. So neutral spine, so you're not doming, but keep the navel to spine, so strong core. Inhale and opening, knees come down open through the front of the body and exhaling again that navel to spine good all right then placing the knees down and coming up so you can keep the toes tucked here so think about that strong activation of core here as you scoop the tail down if the pelvis were a bowl you'd want to make sure that the bowl isn't spilling forwards or backwards and um, so lengthen the sacrum down to the space between the knees bring the hands into namaste and inhale to sweep the arms up bring the right hand onto the upper back and left hand across and then just take a so be strong through the lower body but then let the upper body bend and reach to the side good circling the arms around back into namaste and inhale sweeping up think length as you reach up so from navel expanding up and down and then left hand onto the back and leaning over to the right side. So notice the, um, we lose our awareness. So keep an awareness, even gripping the glutes and scooping the tail down to help to stabilize the lower back and even um, navel to spine strongly here as we move into the side bend then circling the arms back around and into namaste inhale sweeping out and up and exhale the hands down through namaste and keep all of that as you then just lean from your knees back and inhale coming forward soft belly as you exhale navel to spine narrow through the waist good inhaling back up through center and last one, exhaling, coming back, great. Inhale, two, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale like a swan dive, fold forward and down. Plant the hands, splaying the fingers wide and then pressing yourself back into downward facing dog. So whenever we go into an uh, inversion as we are here with the head lower than the heart, there's a um, the diaphragm has to work. So enjoy that belly breath, soft belly, especially as you inhale. And in this shape, you can kind of get a nice hollowing out through the belly as you exhale as well. Inhale, soft belly. And exhale, that navel to spine. Then from here, melting the knees back down onto the floor. So we'll spend some more time on hands and knees. If you need to go uh, onto fist, that's fine. Let's add in that right leg extending back with the inhale. And as you exhale, that rounding through the spine, nose coming to the knee, inhale, extending back. So as you do this movement now, can you focus on the leg being a uh, connected to your center so and it is via the psoas muscle which is attached from the lumbar spine to the top of the femur so feel that it's all one connected movement 
Great. And then bringing the knee into the chest and step the foot forward, coming into a low lunge. Inhale to take the arms up and holding your lunge here. So rather than this obvious movement, can you just let it be just the belly? So to an outside observer, it might seem like nothing's going on. But for you, with this awareness of center, as you inhale, can you maybe brighten a little more to the fingertips? So this is navel radiation and pressing down through your foundation into the earth. And as you exhale, just recoiling your awareness back into center into your navel as the navel moves to the spine. Inhale, this expansion out from navel. So this is navel radiation opening and expanding out from center, deeply connected and exhaling, condensing back with your awareness into center. Just one more breath like that. Can you make it joyful? Looking very serious. Yeah. And then with this exhalation, navel to spine and stepping, stepping yourself back, um, extending the right leg back behind you. And as the leg is just at hip height, draw navel to spine and feel that the leg is supported from your core. Tuck the left toes towards you, inhale here. And as you exhale, lift from your center, hovering that left knee off the floor. Good, 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 good. Inhale a soft belly. Maybe the knee comes down or you can hold and exhale, strong core, but feel the, like connect the dots. Wonderful, all right, then touching down. And this time have both tops of the feet on the floor and inhaling too. Take the arms up overhead. Again, bring the right hand onto the upper back. And if you wanted to, you could wrap around and if you can catch hold or use a ponytail or something. And again, think of that scoop of the tail or in particular, lift of the pubic bone. Inhale, reaching up to the right elbow. And as you exhale, rocking back. Good, inhale, coming back up through center. Exhale, strong core, navel to spine, narrow through the waist. Inhale, lifting up and exhaling. Great, okay, releasing the arms, big wide expanded circle, bring the palms to touch overhead and exhaling, releasing the hands down onto the earth. Sending your left leg back as you inhale. And again, connecting the dots. So rather than it's just a leg moving, exhale, knee into the chest, draw your attention back into center. And then as the leg extends out with your inhalation, finding that little bit of connection that the leg is actually moving from center rather than being stuck on at the hip. The whole body is this orchestra working together to create the symphony. So after this next one, the knee comes into the chest and stepping the foot forward. Inhaling to take the arms up. Nice. And then this pulsing so inhale expand and open and exhale but it's like this uh, ratchet movement so stay expanded just your awareness comes back into center inhale to expand and radiate out and as you exhale a little bit of navel to spine good One last breath like this, enjoying, savoring that feeling of being connected rather than pulled apart. And then exhaling to release down. Stretch back into this hands and knees position again, but tuck the right toes towards you. 
So already here, stabilize through the pelvis, uh, dropping your left hip down and lift the belly from underneath so you're supported here. Then inhale here. And with your exhale, if you can, hover the right knee off the floor. Inhale, either the knee comes down or you can stay lifted. And exhale, again, that strong navel to spine, narrow through the side waist, connecting into TA. One last time, inhaling. And exhale, hovering. Good job, all right. That'll be fun in the full plank variation. Yes, I know you're excited. Okay, inhale and coming up. Palms touch overhead, exhale the left elbow down. And then if you're able to, wrapping around to catch hold. Good, or not, yeah. Inhale here. Feel for the bowl of the pelvis being level and as you um, rock back, the, the movement happens at the knees. So everything from your knees to your elbow stays as is. In fact, you can even think about the pubic bone lifting to help to utilize that core activation. So good, all right, inhaling. Let the palms touch overhead and exhale. Hands down onto the earth. Stretch back into downward facing dog again. And in downward dog, you might like to do a little heel press, grounding one heel, then the other heel into the earth. Nice. Nod the head yes a few times. Inhale your right leg up to the sky. And as you exhale, bring the right knee into the chest, coiling, coming forward, nose to knee. So we did that movement before in hands and knees. Inhale, extend the leg back. Stay connected, plug that right leg into the core. Keep the leg extended as you travel forward into plank. So hovering in plank if you're able to. You can have that bottom knee on the floor if you want to. Inhale, stretching up and back. Once, one more cycle like that. Exhale, knee into the chest. Inhale, stretching up and back. Keep the leg extended, yet still plug it in. Exhaling, travel forward, plank pose, nice. Inhale, stretching up. And exhale to step the right foot to the hands. So this time staying with the back leg straight and lifted, inhale up into your crescent, Anjani Asana. So inhale here. And as you exhale, brush the elbows to the side waist, get that same hollowing out through the spine. Inhaling and brightening, expanding out. As you exhale, bend the back knee and coiling in. That's it, great. Inhale, brighten, expand out. As you exhale, bend the back knee and hollow through the front body. All right, inhale and open, but then energetically exhale like a supernova coming back into itself. I actually don't know my Astro, astro, uh, something, astrophysics, don't know it. But coming in to your center with that awareness. Take one last inhale here, expand and open, brighten to the fingers and exhale, release the hands down. Now you can step forward from here, lift halfway up and lengthen through the spine. Exhale and folding yourself in. So feet are hip width apart and parallel and you're at the front of the mat. Inhale to come all the way up. Bring the palms to touch overhead and to exhale the hands into Namaste. So bring the weight onto the left foot and hands onto the hips and lift the right knee up. So again, thinking of your 
navel as you hold your balance can often just help with balance. Uh, you could take the arms out to the side. Inhale here, so expand, but we're not looking for this expansion, crazy expansion out that makes you lose center. So then twisting yourself around, perhaps catching hold of the right knee with the left hand. Good, but still working the right leg to lift it up higher. Excellent. Nice, okay, then from here, release and touch down the pinky toe, uh, the right leg across the left. Inhale, bring the arms up and then leaning over to your right side, catch hold of the left wrist and go left palm facing out. Stay steady through the legs and again, just this natural elongation from center. Your, um, so rather than this wildfire of expansion out that isn't sustainable, when we're expanding out from a connected center, then it's far more um, sustainable to, to maintain in yourself and in your life. Okay, then coming back up, bring that right knee back up and catch hold of the foot, transferring into a Natarajasana position. So just notice if you're starting to spill from center, can you instead stay connected in your center and rather than even tipping forward, try the version from center to expand back to the back foot up to the fingertips and get that feeling of radiating out yet staying connected. And that can happen via the breath in your belly. Good job, all right, releasing and touching down. Inhale, sweeping the arms up. Let's take one Surya Namaskar A. Exhale, fold forward and down. Inhale, lifting halfway up. And exhale, step both legs back into your plank position. From plank, travel forward. You could take the Chaturanga to up dog or if you wanted to, coming down onto the belly and cobra. And we'll all meet up in downward facing dog. And from downward facing dog, let's take the left side of that flow. So inhale the left leg to the sky. As you exhale, knee into the chest, rounding through the back, navel to spine. Inhale, stretch the leg up and back. Keep the leg extended, come forward and into your plank. Good. With a strong core. Inhale, stretching up and back. Exhale, nose and knee connect. Inhale, up and back. And exhaling again, just this extended plank. Wonderful, okay. Inhale, up and back. And exhale the left foot all the way to the hands. Help it forward if you need to. Stay with the back leg straight and inhaling to take the arms up. So three times, exhaling, brushing, elbows over the side waist and hollowing out. So it's not so much about tipping forward, but rather about getting that, almost like that cat's breath hollowing through the spine and by bending the back knee as well. Inhale, last one. And then holding for a few breaths in the expanded, but drawing your attention, this pulsation of attention in and out of the belly. And give it one last breath here, inhaling, expanding through to the fingertips and exhale, releasing the hands down. Step forward from here and lift halfway up. 
Exhale, fold yourself in. Floating up, reverse swan dive or a spinal roll as you like. And exhale the hands down through Namaste. So bring the arms alongside the body for a moment, and, but still with your awareness. So you can almost think of it like home, like, um, uh, like a, a docking station of your robot vacuum. Just keep coming home, back into center, back to center. And keeping your attention there. This pulsation, it happens both outwardly and inwardly. Obvious, but also at the energetic level, there's this wonderful deepening of that feeling of being more centered. You can then draw, draw the hands onto the hips and transfer the weight onto the right leg so the left leg can lift up and work to actively reach that knee up. And it's still connected. And even as you're pressing down and straightening that right leg strongly, it's um, from your center. Then opening the arms out and from your center, then twisting yourself around, catching hold of the knee if you'd like to, but still working the knee to lift up. Again, just that feeling of expansion from your center. And then returning back to center, you can bring the pinky toes to touch as you cross the legs over, reaching the arms up, right palm faces out, and then leaning to the side. Add in uh, the breath more towards the upper chest, your right upper chest, and add in that active navel to spine as you side bend. Notice how it supports structurally the lower back that doesn't have any bony support. And then inhaling back up to center. Bring the knee up, catch hold of your left foot and coming into Natarajasana, but not just this bleh, spilling forward. Stay instead more expanded from your navel, expand from navel to fingertips in a sustainable, achievable way. And that back leg, let it be connected from center as well. And then returning back into Tadasana at the front of the mat. Inhaling to sweep the arms out and up. Let's take Surya Namaskar C. Exhale, lower forward and down. Inhale, lifting halfway up. And exhale your right leg back. So just stepping into a flow, let all of that go. Inhale, oh, you can do a high or a low lunge there. Exhale, hands onto the earth. Inhale back into your plank, could be modified if you wanted to, and lowering down. Maybe through your connecting vinyasa of chaturanga if you'd like, or stick with the cobra. Rise up through your full or a half push-up and back into downward facing dog. Give it one full breath here, focusing on that ebb and flow. Let yourself just as soothing and mesmerizing as the ocean waves that wash upon the shore. Let yourself be deeply mesmerized, connected to the breath in the belly. Inhale your right leg smoothly to the sky. And exhale to step the foot forward to the hands. Higher a low lunge, inhaling to take the arms up and exhaling down. Inhale, step forward, halfway lift. 
and exhale, folding yourself in. Rising up through a reverse swan dive and let that even come from center and bring the hands back into namaste. Inhaling, sweeping out and up. Exhale, soft knees fold forward and down. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Keep the back of the neck long. Exhale, the left leg to the back of the mat. Inhaling, one breath to lift yourself up. Let all of the movement stem from center. Stepping back, inhale into your plank. Exhale to the earth or chaturanga. Do the little slide back, inhale up dog or stick with a cobra and we'll all meet up back in downward facing dog remember your full yogic breath so it initiates into the belly then the side ribs the upper back and the upper chest Inhale, the left leg to the sky. Smooth, connected movement. Exhaling, everything stemming from center. Foot to the hands, inhaling. Fingertips and heels as much part of the center now as anything. Inhale, step forward. Lift halfway up. And exhaling to fold. Rise up, pressing through the feet to come all the way up and exhale the hands down into Namaste. And just pausing for a moment here, pausing for a short period, perhaps with eyes closed. Feel the afterglow, the residual effect of moving in this way. And let's go again. So inhaling, sweeping the arms. Uh, by go again, I mean Surya Namaskar A to come into down dog. So inhale to lift halfway up. So you can step back and just meet, uh, just go straight to down dog and meet us there. Or if you'd like to, moving through your connecting vinyasa. Hugging the forearms towards each other. Even here, as you take down dog, getting that subtle expansion as you inhale and the exhale, just this stabilizing effect. So again, inhale, right leg lifts to the sky. Exhale, knee into the chest and coming forward. As you come here, twist yourself over your right knee over to the left elbow and then inhaling and stretching up and back. Exhaling, coiling, coming forward, step the foot forward to the hands. Inhaling and taking the arms up. So not doing the obvious pulsation here, but you can have that subtle energetic pulsation. So inhale here. And as you exhale and go navel to spine, start to twist yourself around to the right side. Yeah. Inhale, come back up through center and exhale again over to the right side. So twisting yourself around. Nice. Inhale, stretching up. As you exhale and twist, then hold here. Inhale, brighten to the fingertips and to the legs. And then as you exhale, bring the left hand down onto the floor and come into this revolved Pasvakonasana. Naturally, here, the belly will you'll touch the thigh and that's okay. You can go for maybe with the exhalation, navel to spine and a slightly deeper twist. 
Good. And give it one last breath. Then exhaling and releasing the hand down. So your choice, either using the hands for support or arms to the side as you come into a Vera 3 position, sending that left leg back and the crown forward. And again, from center, bring the knee into the chest and then come to stand up, yes. So Utida Hasta Parangustasana, if you wanted to, you could use a, the belt over the uh, left foot and extending that leg forward and let it come from center again or keep the knee bent and then opening the leg out to the side, but it happens from center. Radiating out. Yeah, good. So this is actually Vashistasana, the um, side plank position. So go right hand as if pressing into the floor. Good, okay, come back through center. Touch the foot down. And so we'll be doing some of those, um, uh, it's almost like a rotisserie movement with the, this um, right leg. You can inhale and take the arms up overhead. Uh, you know what? Exhale and bring the right foot into a figure four and folding down. You might have the upper arms or the shins, pardon, your forearms on the shin or you could come down onto the floor. You could even try for this balance if you're able to. So the trick with this balance is of course being aware of center, making sure your knees are happy is also good. And then leaning back as if into, onto a wall behind you. So rather than hunched forward and perhaps bringing the hands into namaste for a moment. All right, unhooking the foot, plant the hands and stepping yourself back. Lift as you lower yourself down onto the belly. Pillow the hands for a moment and just resting. This is, um, it's a rare thing. We're not often on our belly on the earth. So tuning in to your belly, connecting to Mother Earth and especially the ebb and flow of the breath. This constant, ceaseless, life-giving flow of the breath. Bend the right knee up, uh, foot towards the buttock. And then reaching the right hand back for the right foot. Send the left arm forward now. Coming into a, like a bow pose position, half bow. You could stay here, or if you wanted to, lifting the arm and leg as well. So sometimes um, with the other arm and leg down, it throws you out of center. Try and find that symmetry within the pose as best you can and then releasing down. Tuck the hands, <laughs> no comment. All right, <laughs> touch the foot to the floor. Rise up through a full or a half push up. Actually, just lower the knees to the floor for a second. So continuing on with this same right leg. So um, we will take that kind of rotisserie movement, flipping over and taking wild thing and then knee into the chest and shooting the leg out and you can take this fallen triangle or if you wanted to lifting the leg even taking it forward hell you can chop into splits if you wanted to oh you're all doing it already excellent So from down dog, flipping over, wild thing, and then knee back into the chest. So again, letting all the movement come from center. 
and then flip yourself back. Take the knee towards the left armpit and then shoot it out and bring the back heel down onto the floor. So, and then there's the option of hovering the foot, maybe catching hold. Yeah. Okay, then releasing and rest into child's pose for a moment, perhaps releasing through the wrists by making little bird beaks there and settling. And with a little glimmer of excitement inside, you can think, wow, yes, left side, how exciting. You Finding yourself in down dog when you'd like to get there. So down dog. Inhaling the left leg to the sky. Exhale knee to chest and even trying for the right armpit just across the body here. Yeah. Inhale stretching up and back and exhale the foot forward all the way to the hands. Inhale expanding the arms up and just tuning into that more subtle expansion and contraction. So this is the spanda or the pulse of the universe Inhale to expand, exhale, so the summertime expansion and then the condensing of winter or nighttime. So take one more inhale here. And with the exhale, twisting yourself around to the left side. Inhale back up through center. And exhale, navel to spine as you twist. That's it. Last one, inhale and exhaling. Then coming on down and into your revolved Pasvokanasana. Yeah. Checking in still that all of the expansion is coming from center. Connected, stable. One last breath here with the inhale to expand and the exhale navel to spine. Excellent. And then tipping yourself down, either uh, using the hands or arms alongside the hips as you come into your Vera three position here, which is really just a, a transition pose as you come up. Yep. And potentially, stretching the leg out or staying with or using your belt or um, keeping the knee bent then take the leg out to the side press the left hand into as if into the floor like full vashistasana nice okay come back through center and releasing, touching the foot down. Inhale the arms up as you exhale, go left foot into this figure four shape. Figure four chair, if you wanted to, staying here or maybe you could move towards the floor. So even just this awareness in center will help you to balance, yeah. And we, the nature of balance is that we need to, uh, like any muscle, we need to work that muscle. And the way that we work it is by falling over, gracefully, joyfully. And that's how the brain goes, ah, oh, that wasn't it. <laughs> so no, no problem. <laughs> and working with all our frustrations and okay remembering it's just a yoga pose as well inhale to come all the way up and exhaling folding forward and down lift halfway up as you inhale and then stepping both legs back through your 
plank position. Let's all then come down onto the belly. Pillowing the hands, breathing down into the belly. But rather than being hard and strong on the exhale, can you now be soft? So this is the, the beauty of the exhalation, that it can either be this soft letting go, or the exhale can be forced and more powerful. This is the, the beauty of a center, that it has both a strength and a softness. And that like any muscle, like any quality, we can dip and into either of these whenever we need them. So bend the left knee and catching hold of the left foot. So you'll notice that if you've got the right hand and foot down that this pose kind of throws you off center. So do your best to find center. It may be easier to lift the right arm and leg. One of the beauties of the practice of yoga, just that ability to try different things on and then exhaling to release. You could keep the foot up or I think we just moved straight back into downward dog last time and remember our little rotisserie movement. So inhale the left leg up, bend the knee, heel to the buttock and flipping over. So travel forward, you're in like a side plank position here. And then flipping back to center, knee into the chest and across to the right armpit as you come into this fallen triangle position, lifting the hips up, maybe hovering the left foot. Then releasing and touching the hand down, coming through center and resting into child's pose, maybe taking a little um, bird beaks through the hands, if you'd like to. So naturally in child's pose, you're going to find that softness and ease in the belly equally wanting this. As much as the power and strength, we want to also be able to be soft at times and flow. Slide the hands under the shoulders and use the arms to lift yourself up. Return into this kneeling position as we come towards camel pose. So um, this is where we want a bit of both. We want the strength and power in the lower body, sort of from navel down, but then this flexibility and softness in the upper body, like bamboo being strong and stable at the base, but the tips are very flexible. So you can use your hands, um, thumbs to encourage that scoop of the tail, sacrum to the space between the knees and lift up through the chest. If it's okay for your neck to look all the way up, but otherwise you could stay looking forward. So keep that strength and tone through the lower body, even feeling for your glutes being active there as you maybe take one hand down onto right hand, down onto the right heel and reaching the left arm up and over. And if you're able to, taking the left hand down and we'll exit by reaching the 
right arm back. So it's a little bit of a, a twist and a back bend. So you want to look after your lower back here as you then come on up. And it's absolutely fine to just take camel pose, Ustrasana, like that. I think it's one of the potentially injurious poses just because gravity is kind of forcing down on the lower back like that. So if you need to rest into child's pose, you could do that. Or if you're good to do another um, camel, then you're, you can. So you might even... So the toes tucked can be like a little bit of a built-in block, makes the heels higher up. But if you'd like to, having the tops of the feet on the floor. And again, connecting into that breath, there might, you might need to focus on the strengthening aspect to support the lower back, navel towards the spine but certainly an awareness in center as you inhale and come back up by pressing the belly forward. Then releasing the hands down. Uh, take the knees wide, but bring the big toes to touch. So threading the needle, right hand under the face. Inhale the left arm up to the sky and exhaling to thread that through. And doing that twice more, inhale, opening out. Again, feeling that connected, like a join the dots from the fingertips to the center. And one last time, opening and threading through. And then bringing the uh, right arm around behind to perhaps back of the hand onto the waist or wrapping around to the thigh. And again here, you can let the belly be pretty soft. Enjoy the opening here. Yeah, if there are any other variations that you would prefer, go ahead and do that. We'll take one last breath here. And you can unravel your right arm. Bring the left arm out, but just go forearm onto the floor. So your forehead is going to touch the left forearm and reach the right arm forward. Going into and lift the right elbow up off the floor. So going into a little bit of a, a chest opener, getting ready for some deeper back bends. You can then switch arms. So bring the right forearm across and left arm forward and actively reaching the left arm forward as much as you can. As you inhale, think about that lengthening and opening the underside of the arm. And as you exhale, rather than it being forced, you can let it be quite soft. Invoke that qualities of letting go, of surrender, of softness. And coming back through center, bring your left hand under the face, inhale the right arm to the sky and exhale to thread through. And twice more like that in your own time, even with eyes closed, going for that deeper thread of awareness as if the fingertips are connected to your navel. And then once you settle in, you can wrap the left arm around and get comfortable there. You 
could take any arm variation that works for you with that left arm. You might find that the softness of the exhalation and the inhalation envelop you, bringing a great rest and an ease and a peacefulness. Give it one last breath here. And then use the left hand for support to bring yourself up. And take Anahatasana or puppy pose as it's sometimes called, but this time on the elbows, your triceps will love this. After yesterday, I'm sure. So melting, melting the chest down. Still go for that feeling of the armpits wrapping around to face each other or to smile at each other. And again, every exhale, just this melting, melting, softening. Lift the chest up a little and come up onto hands and knees. Bring the hips down so you can swing the legs around and come to lie down onto your back. So not quite Shavasana, sorry. As you lay on your back, uh, let's actually starfish for a moment. So extend the arms out and the legs out wider than your mat so that you've got this expanded area that you're claiming as your own. And as you do this, just again become aware of your centre, like your it feels so comfortable and natural now. But equally, feel how everything is connected into this center, from the extremities, to the organs, to the crown of the head, to the tail, tip of the tailbone. You've got this integrated sense of wholeness. Feel again that centered, not just as a physical space, but a psychological space as well. And from this expanded open position, bring the knees into the chest and hug into yourself, even lifting the nose up to the space between the knees and coiling. Then releasing the feet down onto the floor. So ready for bridge pose, make sure the feet are hip width apart and parallel. And let's get some pelvic rocking happening. So. If you're not sure, the hips are not lifting. We're just doing that same almost cat's breath that we have been doing. So as you inhale, the lower back will arch, but the hips stay down. And as you exhale, press the lower back into the floor and curl the pubic bone towards the navel. So again, just tuning in to this oscillation, this constant, life-giving oscillation of the breath. Now, as you come into the exhale shape, pressing the lower back into the floor, now you can start to inhale and lift the hips up off the floor. And then as you exhale, 
lowering one vertebrae down at a time. So then hips stay down, it'll be a two breath cycle. Inhale, rock onto the tailbone, lift the lower back and exhale, press the lower back into the floor. Then inhale to lift the hips up, like links in a chain, one vertebrae at a time, lifting. And one more time like that, exhale to lower. A full breath on the floor. So inhale, arching the lower back. Exhale, press the lower back into the earth and inhale to lift the hips up and then lifting and holding your bridge pose so you might like to interlace the fingers behind the back of the body drive down through the inner heel especially to bring an evenness through the four corners of both feet lightly press the back of the head into the floor to preserve the arch of the neck, the curve of the neck, and lift the chin up, sorry, lift the chest up to the chin. Lift the hips a little higher by engaging through the glutes. And then opening the arms out into a T position, lift right up onto tippy toes so you can lower yourself slowly down. So we'll do the one-legged version Ekapada Setu Bandhasana, one-legged bridge pose. So you start as we did a moment ago. So you can inhale and arch the back. Exhale, flatten the lower back towards the floor. Then inhale to lift up, interlacing the fingers behind the back of the body. Then heel toe your right foot into the midline of the mat and draw the left knee into the chest and stretch the left leg up straight. Strong through your right leg, lifting through the hips, finding center even in this asymmetry. Then bring the left knee into the chest, place it to the floor. Right knee into the chest and extending the left leg up. Again, find that center, find your um, even within the unbalanced, uneven shape. And again, knee into the chest, replacing down onto the floor. Open the arms out to the side and lowering yourself down and pausing for a moment. So you may like to take the deeper back bend of wheel pose or Urdhva Dhanurasana. Um, correct name is upward facing bow pose. So that's up to you. You could take bridge pose for a third time, even the one legged variations. But if you'd like to position the feet nice and close to the hips, tuck the fingers underneath the shoulders, as long as your shoulders and spine are up for this. And then press into the hands and feet and lift up onto the crown of the head. Then from crown of the head, pressing through the arms and the legs to come up into your wheel pose or not. Yeah. To come down, back of the head comes onto the floor and lowering yourself down onto the earth. Yep. So if you wanted to take another wheel pose, I always say that one is never enough. One is just hard work. It gets easier once you've done it a few times. If you wanted to, you could also try the one-legged variation of your wheel pose. So you, we will be breaking it down, wheel pose, uh, later so don't fret good job all right once you're done with the back bends then counter posing bringing the knees into the chest you could take a little bit of rocking side to side. 
Maybe using their hands to circle the knees around. And this could happen with the breath or it could just be more organic and spontaneous. From here, let's come into a threading or a eye of the needle. So left foot onto the floor, right foot comes across into that figure four shape. And then right hand between the legs coming into uh, the knee into the chest and then it could be like a little bit of rocking side to side. If you wanted to stretch the left leg out and get a bonus hamstring stretch, you could do that. And hopefully just quite naturally your awareness will rest in the belly after spending so much time with this. Hopefully it's just a, a second nature thing. Then we'll turn this into the twist. So bring the left foot onto the floor, open the arms into a T position, then lift the hips and Take them over to the right side so you can twist to the left. So it'll be different for everyone. Some people like to cross the legs way over like cafe style, others uncross the legs. Just find a, a position, a spinal twist that's right for you. And wherever you are, just allowing yourself to settle. Again, welcoming the softness of the exhalation. So when we talk about center as an alignment tool, it can be switched on, say in like plank pose, or switched off like we are now or it could have that alternating current, which is what we worked with most of the class. So you can then come back through center and take the eye of the needle into the left leg, welcoming that opening through the left outer glute. You might like to be in stillness or have a gentle rocking. And remember that option of your right leg straightening up for a bonus hamstring stretch. Hmm. Separate the teeth and let the whole face become very soft. Now releasing the right foot to the floor and shifting the hips over to the left as the knees come to the right, reconfiguring into the twist that works for you. And in a twist, we don't want to feel the stretch in the lumbar spine, but more through the thoracic spine. So as much as you can, sink that left shoulder down towards the floor. You might even be able to get deeper into the thoracic by moving the right scapula or right shoulder blade off to the right. Moving yourself towards the Shavasana mindset. Feeling everything begin to sink into stillness. And 
And then when you're ready to, you can position your body for Shavasana. You may like to have a bolster underneath the knees, positioning yourself. for comfort. Once again, having this experience of wholeness. As you relax the legs and relax through the torso, especially through the belly. Feel for all the points of contact that your body or your back has with the floor and allow yourself to sink and soften. The neck and shoulders shedding tension and feeling all of that tension drain down the arms to be released through the fingertips. awareness through the face, relaxing the eyeballs, let them sink into the sockets like uh, two pebbles that have been thrown into a pond. Let the furrowed brow soften. The eyebrows feel like they'd slide off the side of the face cheeks relaxed, teeth apart. Let the upper palate feel like it just slides down towards the earth. In fact, your whole head, that cannonball, heavy head sinks down into the earth. And with the whole body relaxed, Feel for this thread of connected awareness from the belly through to the legs, to the toes, from your navel up the chest and out to the fingertips, from your center to the crown. that this is the definition of synergy. Synergy is where the whole is that much greater than the sum of the individual parts. A union, a unison. The effect of the, a grand orchestra all working together to create this spectacular symphony. Your whole body humming, buzzing, vibrating.
And then that psychological space of center, steady, unwavering, sometimes soft, sometimes strong, but always, always connected. Spend a few moments here enjoying this quality. Feel that nothing need be done. Nothing need be done. While our modern life calls us out of center with all the bright, shiny things to entice us out of ourselves, what a gift to have this yoga practice to reset our center, to reset within ourselves. no matter what is going on. You can allow yourself once again to be aware of your physical body, this beautiful body temple of yours laying on the earth. Be aware of that gift of each and every breath, both the inhale and the exhale. Allow the breath to start to lengthen. Awaken the body, wiggling the fingers and toes. And when you're ready to, rolling yourself over to the side before coming on up to a seated position. Use 
using your arms to press yourself up. And with the hands at the heart space, as always, counting our lucky stars that we live where we live, that we have the beauty in our environment and the peace in our community and the bounty in our lives. And knowing full well that there are many beings out there suffering right now, we can send the blessings, the overflow, the bounty out to them, the peace out. May all beings be happy and free from suffering. May all beings be at peace. Please join me with one om to send our blessings out. Take a long inhale. Oh. Stay to you all. Thank you.